Thank you so much for hanging out with us here on uh, Sport on 405. On Twitter, of course, we are hashtag Sport on 405. We are live throughout uh, our beautiful continent of Africa. And today we have a treat for all the Kaiser Chiefs fans. And they can talk to us. It is hashtag Kaiser Chiefs 50. And uh, that's uh, where you can uh, talk to us about, uh, well, your memories. Do you have any particular favorite player of old or that is currently playing? maybe, or a favorite goal that you've uh, seen. I remember particularly one of Jablani Mendu. I don't know how many of you remember Jablani Mendu. He went on to play for the likes of Mamelodi Sundowns, but he had a real knack for long-range goals. And yeah, it, he, he, he could really hit them from 30 yards out. And he scored one of the memorable goals for me in a Kaiser Chiefs shirt. Well, let me introduce to you my first guests then. I've got in studio to my immediate left, Kemiso Mutaung, uh, who is Kaiser Chiefs digital manager, as well as uh, Kaiser Junior. A lot of you might know him, well, will uh, know him from his playing days. But let me start with you, Kemiso. Okay. One of the things that I love about your Twitter account <laughs> <laughs> is that people, well, I, I think everybody immediately the Chiefs Twitter account says, breaking news. <laughs> it sends the entire country into a frenzy. Who, who is it? Is, 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 <laughs> is Kaiser Jr. leaving? Uh, yeah, he should leave. Yeah. What, what's happening? Ernst must go, you know? I, I, I'm surprised that it, the, the, the Ernst out brigade is not there after losing last night. <laughs> but are you the face of it? I am most certainly not the face of it. I have a digital team that I work with. Yeah. Um, a few uh, gentlemen in my team, our digital assassin who handles Twitter is Mandla. Um, and my colleague Toby uh, is a photographic uh, person. He's yeah. an actual qualified photographer, um, fashion photographer, and he handles Instagram. And uh, between the three of us, uh, we assist each other on admi admin. Um, but basically, we form part of the content team of Kaiser Chiefs. Yeah. And when Mandla puts breaking news, I know that feeling. At the village, everybody's like, okay, let's go now, breaking news. And uh, we know that... And even before so you vocal. announce the breaking yes. news, and I think you deliberately go like two hours with, with just... There's a time, with though... Just that tweet, breaking news. There's a time that we're like, okay, guys, let's stop this breaking news thing. Can we just stop? Um, but we know that it creates a frenzy, and we love that. Our people are so vocal on social yeah. media, and we love them for that. I mean, they swear us, they love us, they <laughs> hate us, they... It's, it's a family, and that's yeah. what happens in a family. You go through good and bad times, and the great thing is that we're able to hear their voices. <clears throat> yeah. um, so our Twitter fans, uh, who are our real fans, our Facebook, Instagram, our everybody, this Chiefs family is just amazing. And, and one of the <laughs> things is that you guys, you were the first for a lot of things. I, I think you were the first to actually have a village to, to say you have your base uh, at, at Naturena, well, the first in the country to have one of those. We have Ikamba at, at, um, at Ajax, there's, there's now Klorkop for yes. sundowns. But you guys were, I'm, I could be wrong, but I think you were the first to, to have that. But your Twitter account is also the first one, your, your, your digital uh, yes. um, space, yes. is, is one that has embraced the moving of the times, like, quicker than everybody else. I, I, I don't know if that's, uh, that's something that's True. deliberate. It is deliberate. Um, you must know, and you know this about our chairman, he's always been a visionary uh, person. He's a person who's always thought for the future. And he created a digital department about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. He said, guys, um, things are moving, and you guys are into this, so let's do this. And he created a space for us to exist at Kaiser Chiefs. And now we have a fully fledged, and we've had a digital yeah. team for all these years. And we were the first club to have a digital team. Um, some people say, oh, it's a family position. And actually what it means is that we are a team that is moving right into the future. The future is now, it's 2020. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, 2020 was in the future and the future is actually now. Yeah. Um, so definitely being a first, having the village, um, the chairman, getting the property back in the days when he wasn't even able to buy the property as a black man. Yeah. Um, you know, the first to bring in some of the coaches that we brought in, some of the iconic players, a digital team, an iconic marketing department. Uh, a, a formidable football force. We've always been first at what we do. Yeah. And the one or two times we haven't been, trust me, we feel it. Um, it's not in our DNA yeah. to follow. And that's have because been we've times? been led have in been, that way. Have there been times we've been following? 
Let's bring you into the conversation <laughs> then, <What>? Keza. <laughs> One of the things that people have wanted to know about you in yeah. recent times is what are you doing? Since leaving the pitch, yeah. what is it that you do? First and foremost, thanks for having us. It's a great honor. I think we feel very at home. It's like what we've seen in the studio. It's, it's like we're yeah. at Naturia really cool, itself. Yeah. <laughs> to answer your question, uh, I, as you know, I studied my, my finance degree and completed it last year. And it was very important for me as one of the reasons why I retired in the first place was to focus on my next phase in life. So at this moment in time, I've been spending, again, a lot of time in, in different departments within the company. Um, obviously, with a strong focus in, on the football element, but now it's about the business of football. And that's mm. why I would like to use what I've learned from my playing career, uh, what I've learned from my studies, and of course, just from general experience through, through the family interaction with everyone else around us, to, to add value. So uh, to answer the question, I'm involved in the business of football, and I'm trying to give back and also play my part in, in the next 50 years that the club can have. Okay, so definitely fans can look forward to Sing me, uh, Sing me more often. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. So that's as far as you're willing to go. No, yeah, no, it's, it's an honor to be around any element of the club. So yeah. For me, it really is a pleasure. It's an honor. I learn every day. Yeah. And I think also, you know, if Luto, our chairman, he's, he's a person who, even at his age, he yeah. still tells us he's learning. Yeah. So for us, it's an honor to be around every element of the department, whether it's football, commercial, marketing, finance. It's, it's an yeah. honor. We learn every day, and it's a privilege. I said to you uh, during the break, that I was there when you announced your retirement yeah. in the village. I was in that press conference and for, it, it was, a, it, it's always a privilege to go to the village because there's, there's fans that would love to, to get there and yeah. they can't. Uh, so we cover the news, sports sure. news, football news, and we get to be there. And for those who could not get there, I can tell them it was very emotional. Uh, the big sister, Jessica, is not here, but she couldn't hold back the tears. I remember it very clearly. Yeah. And one of the, the things that stuck with me that you said in that press conference a, a few years ago was that the name on your back has made it so difficult for you to play for Chiefs, and it has meant that you have to do twice as hard for half the chance. Mm. No, Please tell our viewers what, what you meant by that. No, and just to, be, to be honest, it's, it's a lot, that name carries a lot. Our chairman is a legend himself. Mm. Everyone knows uh, what he's built, it's an institution. And to, to follow in those kind of steps, it took a lot. But people don't understand the fact that you have to always work harder because now you have to show people that, no, I earn my stripes. I'm not sure because it's a surname. So whether it's, it's, it's fitness and uh, you're tired, you can't be at the back. Mm. You must be in the front because if you're not in the front, it's like, oh, well, shame and son, you know, he, he can jog. It yeah, so, doesn't, so doesn't work that yeah. way. Yeah. If you are, you know, on the bench and you haven't been chosen, you have to, it's a fine line because you're there to play as a footballer. Everyone, no, no one wants to sit on the bench, but you have to understand that you must be a team player. Now, yeah. anybody else can clap their hands and say, guys, you know, good luck. And coach can be like, well, he's supporting the team. Well done. If I did that, it could be like, well, he doesn't worry if he's playing or not. Mm. So yeah. it's a very fine line that I always had to understand. But I knew what I was getting into. I understood my, my role, my responsibility, and I was willing to, to go the extra mile. So it, without a doubt, the, the surname carries a lot. But at the same time, it, it's built a lot of character. Yeah. And I wouldn't change anything uh, in any way over, over my whole career. Yeah. And it's really built the shoulders I have now and prepared me for for everything else in my life. So mm. it, was, it was really, it was really a, a factual <coughs> statement that I yeah. live by even today. Yeah, you know? I, I would imagine, uh, Kemiso, that it's, it's not only b been difficult for him as a player or someone that a lot of people would know, you guys are working behind the scenes and everything, but it, it was also difficult for you because one of the criticisms that has come for the club is that it's a family business. And that's a phrase that was coined many years ago, <laughs> and it has stuck. And some people actually say, oh, the family business has lost. That's, that's how they, they, they say, they, they, they refer to, to mm. Kaiser Chiefs. Mm. How has that been for you guys? Do you sit and discuss that, oh, guys, uh, family dinner, <laughs> Christmas, oh, guys, what? How is it, what are those pressures that come with being a mutaung? Look, um, the truth is Kaiser Chiefs is a family business. It's 
a black-owned family business, and we cannot run away from that. It's when something is said in a way that is disrespectful um, that it's used against us. And we've all agreed it um, cannot be used in that way. And that's why we refer to ourselves as the Kaiser Chiefs family. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the Mudongs, it's about all of us. Um, the pressures are there and we are born into this family, it's who we are. Um, and we have the shoulders to carry it, but it's tough. We do have but those is there something, discussions. Is there anything wrong if it's a family business? No, like there's nothing wrong. It's just, it's, it's, it's the way that it's said. But it's many years after and people understand uh, the intentions are, are not to disrespect our supporters. Mm -hmm. It is as much ours as it is theirs and theirs as it is, as it is ours. Mm -hmm. um, we're referring to the fact that we are celebrating our birthday. It's the Kaiser Chiefs family's birthday. It's not our birthday only. Yeah. Um, there's an incident I remember in Durban many, many years ago when we used to play our home games there. I was branded and I was with a colleague of mine and we were walking in the street. And in Durban, uh, the guys, some guys said, him down. And I turned around and I said, Tulani, uh, he knows my name. And Tulani is like, no, man, in Durban, we're all Mdong. So I never forget that. And I believe that what? everyone at the village, everyone that supports Chiefs, we're all the children of Kaiser Mdong. We are Mdongs. Um, it's your surname and then Mdong. And we're one family. Yeah. And there is nothing wrong <clears throat> by saying that we're a family business. It's just that we mustn't disrespect each other. Yeah. We are a black-owned business, and there are not many black-owned businesses that have lasted this long. And I think what we should do is celebrate that rather than look at the people. Mm -hmm. um, when you look at the people, look at the chairman. Look at the amazing work he's done. Um, and his humility. He is a father to all of us. It's hard. Yeah. When you're the daughter of a chairman who has done so well, or the son of a chairman who's done so yeah. well, you have big shoes to fill, and we're not filling his shoes, we're walking right next to him. Yeah. Um, so it's difficult because people will say, oh, you're the digital manager because you're the daughter. Um, never mind knowing that I have a degree, I've studied, I work. Um, Kaiser, you're a player, he's, he's, a, he's a very good player. He yeah. was one of my favorite players with that head she back in the that. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> so, you know, but I, the reality <laughs> is this is what happens. Yeah. You will be chastised, you will be asked questions, people will say things, but it's really all about how you carry the brand, how you carry the name. Yeah. And they refer to us as football royalty, and in no way am I saying that in a, a way that lacks humility, but if you are that, you walk and talk that. And own it. And you behave that way. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick break. Uh, Keza was definitely uh, potent with that head. Uh, uh, two people at Keza Chiefs, him and Sean Bartlett, mm. uh, who's now the assistant coach, were very lethal when it comes to aerial balls. We're taking a short break, though. We continue with uh, Kemiso Mutaung as well as Keza Mutaung Jr. And we're going to talk about what's in it for you. Why should you be celebrating this 50th birthday with them? Stay with us. Thank you so much for hanging out with us here on Sport On. Uh, and we are live on Newsroom Africa throughout the continent of Africa. As you know, that uh, we cover the entire continent. And today is a special show where we are talking to Kaiser Chiefs. I'm no longer re referring to them as uh, uh, the Mutaung family. And some of the players are here. I told you a little bit earlier that uh, we're going to be chatting to them also about the current season and what the aspirations are. Of course, it would be awkward if they, at some point, were leading by 10 points and they happen to collapse and not win the league on the occasion of their 50th birthday. We wouldn't know what to say as the media, but <laughs> what would you, what, what, like, that's the worst that could happen, right? No, the worst that could happen is, 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 is for us not to live up to expectations that we've set for ourselves. So if you think about it, the last four years haven't been our, our standards. So we know we need to win every game, not about the league, net bank. Every game will be in the points and the trophies, but our standard is set. It is a league title, it is a net bank cup which is left. So, yes, you know, last four years we haven't done that and, and our standard is, is stay the same. We need that standard. So without, without, without saying, this is a very special year, even more so. And we talk about, we've spoken about pressure a lot, yes. especially for you guys. Um, the fact that you, like, this is the longest trophy drought at the club surely it sting it stings and you there's 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 a lot of questions from the supporters 
as to what's happening, what should be done. I, I think right now with leading since the beginning of the season, it has somewhat subsided, but it's always there. And it, the monkey is there. And I think it's, it's something that uh, management, the family is, is just, just desperate to get rid of. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if, if you look at our history, we know, uh, you know what the Giants have done before us. You know our standard. We, and our, our supporters know us to win. So they are right in, in expecting the victory. Mm. And I you know it's been, this is, a, this is a time in the history that we've learned a lot. Yeah. Uh, what has worked, what hasn't worked, and, and what's going to take us into the future. So without a doubt, it stings every day. And uh, what football has taught us is that it's never over till it's over. Yeah. So you can leave with 10 points today, you can leave with 20 points tomorrow, but what counts is at the end of May, who's number one? Mm. You know, at the end of the league, who has the, the trophy in, in the cabinet? So mm. the guys stay focused um, on, on their tasks, on their yeah. job, uh, and just keep their heads down and just, you know, go for the points. But it's a marathon. And nothing's yeah. won yet. And I think everyone, everyone uh, at the club, that you know, all the players, management staff, everyone knows that. So we take nothing for granted. Yeah. We're focused and we're, we're, we're looking just to solely our job. All right. Winning yeah, is in our DNA. Winning it's is in, in the DNA. DNA. And, and it, they're right. The fans are right yeah. to expect that. That's who we are. Mm -hmm. it's, it's who we are. We're, we're, we're based on excellence. So we need to live up to that. And that excellence started in these days. Yes. Yes. Uh, these visuals that yes. we're seeing here. Great players have, have, have donned this, <laughs> this uh, uh, gold and black, of course, in those days. I don't know what they call those, those pants. e candy. <laughs> <laughs> the short shorts. <laughs> it's candy, yeah. That's, that's yeah. what they call them, they the cool. short shorts. Yeah. yeah. And cool. it, it, was, it was also in those days that Chiefs was just dominating. We saw Teenage Lad that they, I saw Aston Tulli in, mm. in one of those matches there. This was against Vitz. Actually, I think it was back in the 70s or 80s, judging by the picture quality there. Yeah. 70, yeah. 80s. yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Yo. Yeah. Hey. With fans right there on, on the sidelines. Stadiums are full. Power. <laughs> Stadiums are full. Let, let's talk about that. Yeah. I like that you're bringing that yeah. up. Yeah. There's something you're doing um, this coming Wednesday for f the fans, and we expect it to be full. Yes. We expect everybody to come in numbers. Yes. Uh, um, okay, tell us, what is it? So, in uh, celebrating our 50th, and our supporters are celebrating their 50th, so basically on Tuesday, I'm turning 50, Kaiser's turning 50. All of us mm. turning 50. Everyone's turning 50. Mm. We're these excited 50-year-olds. And uh, the chairman has basically um, absorbed the cost for tickets for the stadium. The tickets were for free. So supporters were able to go and get their tickets, a compi ticket, two tickets per person. And they come through on Wednesday. Um, it's actually all the tickets are given out. So it is going to be full. We're just asking our family of supporters to make sure that they don't put the ticket away and not come. Yeah. They must still come. There is going to be entertainment. Uh, we know that the Mapiano uh, craze has hit the country, so yeah. we have some nice entertainment. DJ Maporisa's in the house. And also, come to think of it, this is where you need them the most, actually. This is where we need them. This is where the push this is where we need them. needs to come. You need to restore the, yes. the gap and, if, if, and everything. If you look at it, the, the, the supporters have filled the stadiums this season for us. They have, we've been filling stadiums. Our people have been behind us. And that has been phenomenal to see. And when you look at that footage, you see people right by the touchline uh -huh. almost. And that's, that's amazing to see. So when we're winning, it brings people back to the stadium. And the players understand that. So Wednesday, we're expecting a full house. We've got DJ Maporisa there. We've got Cubs at a small. We have some great giveaways. Um, we're going to have a cake on the field. We have our branches coming through. We want to celebrate with our people. And we're saying, don't buy tickets. No, nobody must sell you mm. anything. You must come with your ticket. You must come wearing your jersey. We launched a jersey. How do I get it? I mean, th the tickets have been already collected. People went to computer. Are they done? They're done. They're done. <laughs> it's done. But you know what? You know, you know why done. I'm asking this? It's done. <laughs> One of our technical people working in the control room asked before. me before the show to ask you guys if tickets are still available. They're no longer available. So if anything, uh, we may be giving <laughs> a few online. <laughs> like but unfortunately, um, once we made the announcement, uh, our family came forward and, and they went to get their tickets. That's our people. Chiefs people are, are, are amazing. So they went out to get their tickets and they were showing them on social media. Hey guys, I've got my tickets. We've launched a 50th jersey. 
So we know people are going to come wearing their colors. I was expecting, so I, was, I, was thinking, I was thinking right now as we come to the show, we're going to be, <laughs> you know, my jersey no, indeed. coming yeah. through. Indeed, so Because so I already coming. saw the logo. It's coming. I saw the 5-0 yes. logo. Yes, yes. Can you explain that, that uh, logo for us? Do you well, for me, at the end of the day, it's about, it's about this combination of, of, of the whole 50 years of journey. Yep. So it's a, it's, a, it's a golden jubilee. If you look at the logo itself, it's bold, it's strong, it symbolizes the whole coming together yeah. and if you think about it it's a thank you to all the founding fathers the chairman themselves all the supporters all the players all the generations who've contributed it's literally a summation you mm. know and if you look at the logo itself it's bold and it's, it, it speaks to being everything in a circle you know nice. so I think it's just yeah. showing the next 50 years ahead of us uh, yeah. opening the platform for a future but it's uh, it's a golden one as you can see I mean a New Jersey uh, I would Hill to wear, I say that's a bad word, but to wear this jersey <laughs> yeah. on, the field. on this yeah. field. Yeah. This light material from our farm. Like, I think nice. they've outdone themselves in terms of material, yeah. in terms of the, the technique, the color. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just amazing. I think it's going to be a golden year, a special year. And if I was any of the players now who could wear this jersey on the so field. So from now on, from uh, is it going to be an away jersey? The guys jersey are going to be wearing it. It's a third jersey. Okay. So we still have the other two jerseys, okay. which have done very well in the market. Okay. Um, we, will, we, will, we will be wearing this on the field on Wednesday and uh, for several other games throughout the year. It's going to be yeah. available, it's a limited edition, so supporters are able to buy the jersey from tomorrow in store and online. Oh, from um, tomorrow, Monday? Yes, tomorrow. from tomorrow. Uh, because you want them to come to the stadium, wear your old jerseys, wear this jersey, come in your colors, brand yourselves, because Just you know when cheese people do they that. They are not for free, right? <laughs> it's only the, the, tickets, the, tickets. Only the <laughs> tickets. Only the tickets. Yeah. But what we are doing is we are allowing them to be able to customize with the special 50th logo on our online store. So if you want something that's different from somebody else that buys it elsewhere, you can get a special one um, on our online store. But, uh, you know, you mentioned a very important thing. You spoke about the teenagers uh, and the, the former players, the legends that we have. The chairman often speaks about the fact that we are standing on the shoulders of giants. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for those guys, we wouldn't be sitting here today. Yeah. If it wasn't mm -hmm. for the chairman and the founding fathers. Starting a team at the age of 20, 24, uh, 24 25, is a big deal. Yeah. I know at 24, I was doing other things. So, e. you know, um, you talk about uh, people that have laid the foundation for us. On Wednesday, we're inviting a lot of our legends mm -hmm. to come through. We're also inviting some of the Highlands legends because there is a history to the Highlands game. Yes. Um, there's quite a bit of a history behind that. And so we want to create that vibe again on, on Wednesday and we want to uh, really create the storytelling throughout this year. Allow people to understand the story of Kaiser Chiefs yeah. because it is this amazing story yeah. for 50 years. And everybody's got some story to tell. Yeah. Like I just told you about the Mim Daung story. Yeah. There's something that people There's have that they can everywhere. relate to the fact, oh, mm. for me, it was the first time I went to the yeah. stadium. It was my first jersey, you know. Uh, or oh, I met Teenage Lover, yeah. you know. So, yeah. All right. I understand the celebrations are going on the whole the, year. The whole oh, year. Yeah. Can you, are you at liberty to tell us now what uh, you guys have planned for, for the Chiefs fans throughout the year? I think there's, they can just expect a lot, of, a lot of celebration, a lot of events, a lot of family events, a lot yeah. of events that, <coughs> especially along this year, are going to involve our supporters a lot of the time. Yeah. But um, I think a lot of surprises also. I yeah. think I couldn't give stuff away now. <laughs> I think people can look forward to uh, something different also this year. And of course, everyone's, everyone's involvement, which is uh, what the chairman, which is what the team's been involved about. It's always about a collective, a family, a community. So I think they could just be surprised, pleasantly surprised, and look forward to uh, a lot of celebration mm. yeah, yeah we've got a, a gala dinner coming up uh, we'll put out a program uh, we'll let supporters know we are like Kaza says going to be doing some family days there are some surprises uh, but like Kaza says it, it's also a tribute not only to our legends but to our supporters yeah that's what this year is about they, and, they uh, have really uh, stuck really, by you right? they have um, <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. even though sometimes they've been angry and it's been it's been justified but yeah. we've made sure that we are fixing things and we have worked on product for them we're putting out a woman's jersey for our ladies because we know we have a huge female base we have a beautiful jersey for the men we have a new jersey launching in the middle of the season but this jersey is going to be worn throughout the year mm. and uh, we want our supporters to know that we are thinking about them throughout the year and there's lots in store for them mm. all right y you heard the question before before uh, we came back on air someone wants to know about your signing policy <laughs> and who makes the calls when uh, Keza Jr. Uh, has to come to the team or leave. And yeah, no, we have a great football department. I mean, if you look at our structure at the moment in time, uh, 
the club has to look after its identity. You know, everyone, everyone looks at the club and knows that fine, a team plays this kind of football, a team signs these kind of players. And if you look at all the big leagues, whether it's AC Milan, whether it's Manchester, they, they, they have their identity and the club sticks to that. So it's a collaboration between the, the technical staff that gets uh, brought to the club and the management and people involved in the football department. Right now, it's worked wonders in terms of our structure with Bobby Mutong, the football manager, the chairman, the coach, everyone adds their view. And we even have a, a football technical committee around that there. So it's, uh, it's in very good hands. Uh, it's planned very well. And there will be more surprises and additions as you move forward. But it's, 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 a, it's about the structure of how it's done. Mm. But it's, uh, it's how it's done on the world stage. And we look forward to improving yeah. it and adding to that. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you so much for your time. Kaiser Mutau Jr. as well yeah. as Kemiso Mutau. It's been fantastic. And thank you for what you've done for South African football. This club is, well, statistically the most <laughs> successful in South African football. Numbers don't lie. And thank you for everything. Long may you continue. And we are hoping that uh, the, the 100th, celebration it's the pizza. centenary uh, <laughs> we, I, I don't know i think i'll still be here hey, hey, <laughs> no, no, no. but thank okay. you thank you so much uh, thank for, you to our for your chairman. time thank you to our chairman yes. thank you for having us but i think thank, thank you, you to our chairman our forefathers our legends yes. our supporters thank you to them yeah and thank you to you guys Thank you All right, much. that's it. where we're going to leave it with uh, uh, Keza as well as Kemi. So stay with us because when we come back, we are still continuing with uh, celebrating Kaiser Chiefs on their 50th birthday. And that's coming up on Tuesday, but we are giving them an early present here at Newsroom Africa. And they will be celebrating again on Wednesday with uh, the supporters against Highlands Park. We're taking a short break. It is hashtag Kaiser Chiefs 50, hashtag Sport on. 405. Willard Katsande as well as Kama Billiard are standing by.